Okay, let's go. I know this place better than you. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to part A of the Metal Gear Solid playthrough. There's no guard. What happened to the music? I'll keep a lookout. Make sure you're ready, okay? Something's very weird. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I better stock up on a, a bunch of items. Just, you know, you never know what may be around the corner here, there, yeah. or anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's not like the game's giving you items for a boss uh, or anything. Right, yeah. We're not. <laughs> it's nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. <laughs> I love how the ammo boxes just spaz out if you can't pick them up. <laughs> right. <laughs> as soon as she said, where, where the, uh, why'd the music stop? My brain just went to, where'd the music go? Oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> That's a lot of bass. Because boss <laughs> music usually has a lot of bass, uh, bass sounds. What the f- What are you thinking? <laughs> I punched Meryl, so she slapped me back. She needs to kill. <laughs> yeah. I also didn't These show... These hands are rated E for everyone. I also didn't show this off about Meryl, but if you stare at her in first person a long time, she her she eventually turns red like she's blushing. Hmm. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. It, it's funny that like that. That is an amazing detail. Yeah, it's also a, a cool detail because, you know, her being a soldier in this whole foxhound program she does have nano machines inside of her and basically in the briefing it said that like the nano machines basically cut off all human emotion to her brain um we can see that like the, the power of love is stronger than the artificial uh nature of being you know being automatons because that's exact essentially what the soldier program is is to basically remove all forms of human nature basically to act as these automatons for the state you know gotcha right so Come on, Mr. Foxhound. is she supposed to be like a love interest for snake oh yeah no without doubt <laughs> oh okay yeah i just wanted to, i just wanted to declare i just wanted to make sure i mean she's the only female here what do you think <laughs> listen listen there were others there was that nurse remember well yeah the, remember? yeah sure the nurse that's a character all right but you're not well, actually listen, you never know you're not, uh, physically, you're not physically with her in the game <laughs> we can figure out long distance you know <laughs> what the do you like me he definitely has a life outside of snake it's not like it's not like the whole world revolves around snake or anything oh, hurry, hurry. Make love to me. what What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> Remember, Brian, it's sci-fi. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Wait, so in sci-fi, girls actually want to fuck you? Don't use your weapon. Um, yeah. There's actually a fascinating. I'm doing this all wrong. No, oh, hang on. There's actually a fascinating movie where that's the premise, actually. Um, like back in the late '60s, and I killed her. Damn it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yes. they... What happened? Snake? Snake? Errol. <laughs> you moron! You idiotic, illogical, oversized, stubborn dipshit! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, don't kill Meryl. You just want to knock her out here. But yeah, there's a, a fascinating movie. I don't remember the name of it. It was like in the like the late '60s, I want to say. It was sci-fi, and basically, all the girls basically on the planet that the our main character visited, basically they're all they're all prostitutes. <laughs> That's deconstructing it way down to a dumb level. It's basically they just threw out the. It was a culture that threw out the entire uh, moral values of like um. You know, housewiving and stuff like that. You're not supposed to love your husband. You're just supposed to fuck him. You know. <laughs> now, I will show you why. Fertilization. 
Right. Yes, here is Psychomantis. I think it's even to this day, fans still consider this the best boss fight in the game. In the entire franchise, actually. I think that his uniform highlights his ribs. I don't... Well, like, I think he's very malnourished. So, basically, the thing with Psychomantis here... He's he's supposed to be like a mind reader, but yeah, uh, a right. Mind fucker. He says that uh, if you get caught in a lot of alerts. Oh, he says that if you kill a lot of enemies. And he says that if you don't fall into any bottomless pits. Huh. Interesting. Depending on how well you've done throughout the game up until this point right. determines how he'll like either compliment you or belittle you. And also yeah. also this part. Like Castlevania, don't you? <laughs> Does he say that if you have Castlevania as he, a game? He, he says that if you have... He says basically whatever other Konami games you have on your memory card, he'll say the name of it. Yeah. So there's Castlevania wow. Symphony of the Night. <laughs> In, on my PlayStation 3, going to my memory card, there's my 196% copy of Symphony of the Night. <laughs> so you nearly doubled the amount of things you need to do. And my, also my Richter run with 128%. <laughs> Man, <it's> old game. Correct! <laughs> <laughs> It's cool. I like little details like that where they'll say or like like they'll acknowledge different stuff depending on like what's on your system or whatever. Yeah. Or like depending on like what you really want the game. Know. I really oh, want to know how mind blown people would have been back in 1998. Oh, very much so because the fourth wall breaking is still not over actually. Back in 98, that was so, like the most wildest shit ever. Oh my god, I could only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sick. Me too. <laughs> and the fourth wall breaking is still not over. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it goes as far yeah, as... That, the, wait, was that part of the game? <laughs> that, that was part of the game, yeah. <laughs> it's still not over. I kind of mess around with codec calls because I was just wondering for myself, uh, basically. So basically, um, you can't hurt Psychomantis at all because he's reading every single one of your inputs. So see, I'm, even though I'm shooting him dead on, none of them are hitting him. <laughs> <laughs> He's using hacks. <laughs> Essentially. Essentially, I don't know why I decided to call a bunch of people here because I could have just done the correct way to do it here. Because I thought um, my they would just outright tell me after a while. But oh well. <laughs> What you're supposed to do, um, think about it back on the days of the PS1, if you're actually playing on the hardware. Um, in order to actually fight the boss, you'd have to unplug the controller from the player 1 slot and put it into the player 2 slot. The boss that you had to do that for. Yeah. Gotcha. Because I, re I remember hearing about that, where um, you had to, where you had to like change the... Uh, the uh, controller port in order to actually attack a boss. I just didn't know what boss it was for. Yep, it was this boss, Psychomantis. It's really cool. <laughs> I think I think it's because of that fans to this day still call this boss fight the best one in the franchise. Cause no yeah. other no other boss in even in the later games Deep. ever do stuff like that. Which is kinda sad, honestly. There was one boss fight kind of in Solid 3 which basically um, made you feel bad for every single enemy that you killed in the game. Like, you'd have to walk through a, like a, a river and basically see the ghosts of every single enemy you killed. It tried to make you feel bad with more accurate statements. Yeah. 
I don't think they were ever a able to ca recapture the, mo the moment of Psychomantis ever. Because they kind of tried again in Solid 4. Because um, sol the Solid 4 bosses are basically derivative off of the Solid 1 boss fights. Kind of, sort of, not really. <laughs> this is supposed to be a time where shit was wild for games. Yeah. But now, it you can expect anything and everything from a fucking game, so nothing is like ever that, truly surprising. Yeah, that's that's a fair assessment, actually. Didn't stop him from trying, though. <laughs> that was uh, fair. Yeah. But yeah, back in back in '98, stuff like this is mind blowing. Yeah, but like, I, I'm honestly just curious how you program something like that. I took On a bunch of ifs in the last thing. Yeah. yeah a bunch probably. of if statements. I mean, I mean, honestly, even even like still now, like fourth wall, like like stuff is still really cool to me. Like, which is probably probably why I still I, I like a lot of stuff like Undertale and Doki Doki Literature Club because those have a lot of stuff yeah. that will like that, that that like keep track of everything you do and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think there's this GameCube game called Eternal Darkness: Sanity's Requiem, which basically tried to fuck uh, with the with the player psychologically by having like fake game crashes and stuff like that. I'm not exactly sure how the coding of that game works because um, it hasn't been re-released at all. Um, mm. Yeah, so if I ever do find a copy of it, I will get it and see exactly what people are talking about with that game. <laughs> well, I mean, in games like Undertale, that game actually crashes. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah, there'll, there'll be. It, it's not really like that in the like console ports because it's kind of difficult to have a game oh. like, automatically close itself out. But on PC, yeah, you'll have certain parts where like a character will like do something and it will actually close out your game and you have to reopen it. Interesting. Yeah. And then, uh, in Batman: Arkham Asylum, uh, it's it's ve it's very notable. It's one very notable no uh, notable jump scare is um a scarecrow segment uh in which uh it not just messes with batman spheres but also the players by having the game full-on crash um, oh yeah it, it then replays the opening cutscene of uh the entire game making you think that oh we're restarting the entire thing however everything's just like slightly off yeah um, and the character roles are swapped too yeah, so instead of playing as Batman, you're now playing as Joker, uh, having just arrested Batman and sending Batman to Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I remember that now. Wow. <sighs> with Scarecrow being the with uh, Scarecrow being the psychologist uh, that's taking Batman away. I forgot about that moment. That was a pretty cool moment then too. And actually, uh, the room that you're in right before that happens, you can actually uh, see um, the gas effect of gas entering the room that Batman's in through one of the air vents, hinting that uh, you are about to be scarecrowed. We're <laughs> <laughs> uh. about to go, you're about to be high as a kite. Yeah. Yeah, basically. And even even with even with the Arkham games, because I think they tried to recapture that the Scarecrow sequences with the Rachel Ghoul sequence. Am I kind of right about that? Because that's at least what in, I thought. In Arkham like City. Like in Arkham City. Yeah. Uh. No. No. That's not what I got from it. Oh. Well, I I thought I thought it was just similar in the sense that it basically took away the traditional level design that you're familiar with and oh well just... in that sense yeah okay um in the sense of it completely changes up the like the style of what the world and gameplay is like then yes yeah um however that's not the well actually you yeah, know it is the most different each game has like their their individual moment where it's like here's like the the one thing that's going to change up the gameplay um in arkham asylum in arkham asylum it's the scarecrow segment in arkham city it's uh the rachel ghoul segment uh and in arkham asylum uh 
Or even though it's ten, it, even though it's technically a DLC, uh, the Mad Hatter's mission in that game, the like ending, uh, like the boss battle with the Mad Hatter in that game is one of my favorites because Mad Hatter hypnotizes you, and then the game you're you're suddenly on a uh, you know like pop up books. Oh yeah. You're fighting waves of enemies on a pop-up book with a giant Mad Hatter looming over you. Oh, that's 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 fascinating. To get to Metal Gear's okay. Base. Um, but yeah. You have to go that, that's, is that is that the Arkham Origins DLC? No, that's a uh, Arkham Knight. Or, Knight. Uh, okay. Ar I. Is there not really I never Arkham finished Origins? Arkham Origins. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> um, I, I I have been meaning to replay it um, and actually I finish it. I mobile game about Arkham Origins. Um, no, oh, the 3DS game? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Oh, it for the phone. Oh, they came out for the phone, too? I didn't know that. I know, like... The, the fandom has collectively agreed that there's one good aspect of each Batman game. Uh, specifically of the Arkham series. Yeah. With Arkham Asylum, it's the atmosphere. Uh, with Arkham City, and this is where I disagree with people, with Arkham City, uh, peop the fandom really likes the story. Oh, um, no. With Arkham Origins, it's the boss battles. Uh, and with Arkham Knight, uh, I don't remember. Um, I think it's like the, the car. Like the right. I think it's the writing. Um, no, honestly, people hated the car. I know. <laughs> I just thought, like legit. Uh, uh, but you yeah, know, I do, I don't get. It. Honestly, in my opinion, Arkham Knight has the best story out of the games. Um, with Arkham City, probably or not Arkham uh, Asylum being a close second. Honestly, I feel like Arkham City is like bottom tier when it comes to the story of the four games. Yeah, because Arkham, I, I Arkham have, City's I mean. story is literally just a giant fetch quest. Not only that, it was very unclear on who it wanted its final boss to be, or like the who the big bad guy was. It was very unclear because the you had essentially three ish. At first, it was Hugo Strange, and then it wanted to switch phases to Ra's al Ghul, and then finally Joker again. But it always like crisscrossed with one another. Like it didn't know what it who, who the true big bad of the game wanted to be until it was the Joker final boss. And even then, it wasn't really Joker. It was just Clayface. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not a good story. Like I can buy the Clayface thing. I like I I, I can accept. Oh yeah, no, that. there's there's details that uh, like lead to it. Yeah, I can I, I can accept that. It's just like the the other parts of the game are not good, especially if you yeah. <laughs> especially if you include the Catwoman DLC. No. Okay. No way was she just hanging upside down for five hours. Right. <laughs> We are truly the same, you and I. The world is a more interesting place with people like you in it. I never agreed with the boss. You can so fun fact about Arkham. Uh, one more Arkham fact in okay. Arkham City, you can actually find Scarecrow's mask abandoned. Oh, just like laying, just like laying on uh, laying on the. It's on. It's on like a. It's on a support beam on one of the bridges. I've seen through you. Oh, okay. You snake. Didn't You're even notice. Like boss. Yeah, it's a very small. Like you can easily miss it. I didn't notice it until. Uh, <laughs> well, of course, I missed it. Compared to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not so bad. There's even details like that in Arkham Knight. Um, Arkham Knight does a really good job at paying attention to its details. Um, like the fact that um, as the game continues, uh, Joker progressively uh, gets uh, it looks healthier as the game goes on, uh, hinting yeah. at his control over Batman growing in strength. Um, and then another detail is uh, up and from the moment that you are inf that you are infected with uh, Scarecrow's fear gas. Up until you cure yourself at the end of Joker's uh, of Joker's blood, 
uh, throughout the entire game in between those two moments, uh, there, there is a chance that any billboard that you pass will suddenly have, jo it will be replaced with a jokerized version of that billboard. Um, some, some of them is just the face turning into Joker. Uh, with some others, it is a complete Jokerized version of that billboard that's like poking fun at the Bat family. Oh. Um, <laughs> and it is a very, it is a very much a blink and you'll miss it because as soon as you turn the camera away from the billboard and then look back, it'll become normal. It's very, it's a very nice um, attention to detail, and he I love said it. nice at the same time. Psychomantis did. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, great minds think alike. Great minds think alike. Yeah. Let's go, Meryl. I guess I don't know. He murdered I'm people. <laughs> I'm just kind of curious because for this boss, you have to like swap, uh, like what, like controller, like input you're playing through, stuff like that. What if you go into the boss already in the player two slot? Um. Oh. Uh, well, I don't think that's actually possible, because, um, well, like, well, like, think about it, like, movement's always gonna be programmed to the player one slot. Oh, yeah, I, I guess that's true, yeah. Yeah, so I guess, um, yeah, I guess it just wouldn't work, I don't know. I, because, like, after the, this cutscene, um, the part's gonna end soon, but, like, uh, in the next part it says, please plug in the controller to the... Uh, you know, player one slot. Um, if uh, you try, okay. yeah, if you try moving around, nothing happens. How old are you? Old enough to know what death looks like. So it's just something that's like specifically for that boss, right? Yeah. Is there anyone you like? I've never been interested in anyone else's life. So you are all alone, just like Mantis said. Is it better late than never to say hello? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to the, the the last episode for today. Yeah. Th 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 <laughs> so funny thing is, I'm only gonna be here for a few minutes, and I thought I should come on while I had a break to explain why I wasn't here for most of it. Okay. <laughs> well, a few minutes is all you're gonna need because we're basically done with the episode now. Yeah. <laughs> um. I completely had forgotten that a month prior to tonight. I had bought tickets for a WWE event that was in town. Oh. Uh, well, I didn't good. realize until yesterday that I still had the tickets, and I'm like, well, shit, this is correlating with our recording. I see. It's like, well, I either waste a 61, like an $81 ticket, or I don't waste that I'm ticket sorry. and miss a recording session. Okay. Oh, I'm like, fuck it, might as well. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah, that's like 81 so, yeah, I'm 81 here at the North Charleston now. Convention Center. For WWE. Gotcha. <laughs> at least I thought I should explain. I felt I should at least explain myself. Yeah, okay. we used the yeah. blood sacrifice. Well, there you go. <laughs> the blood sacrifice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry if my audio or my voice sounds like shit because I'm using my headphones, which do not have good quality. It's it's fine. This, this is the last part for today. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just felt it, I should come on here and explain myself. And this was completely on me. I had forgotten about the tickets because work got me so fucking small. That that's that's all right. If <laughs> if I hadn't delayed this game so long, I think it would have been a New Vegas day. Um, <laughs> so that would have been. Just, I would have just loved. Just like there, there'd be a little snippet of the video. Of, meanwhile, what's Cameron doing? And it's just a video <laughs> of me at the event. Meanwhile.